Hello, writers. Welcome to episode number 48 of How Do You Write? I'm Rachel Heron, and I'm so glad you're here. Um, today is an awesome show. I am talking to Monica Leonel, and I've been a fan of her since I heard her on, I think I first heard her on the Rocking Self Publishing podcast with Simon, and I think she has great things to say, super interesting, uh, and it turns out that she is just a doll and I want her as a friend. So, um, Monica be warned, uh, but she's, she's great. And I was very inspired, uh, talking to her, which was really nice because I was kind of having a crappy day until talking to her. Nothing, well, nothing that I can, uh, handle. It's on, you know, it's, it's other people's problems, but something, some things that I've been worried about and I was just upset and talking to her just brightened my day. And I know that it will brighten yours too. And she gives some great writing tips that you can put immediately into practice. So, um, just a little catch up on my end. Uh, I finally got the thriller to where my agent wanted it. Um, one of my coaches and my friend Mariah uh, was uh, dying laughing at me on Twitter because um, my agent just kept making me take out emotion because it's a thriller. It has to move fast, 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 fast. And, uh, and I'm always <laughs> nagging Mariah to put more emotion into hers, Mariah. I hope you don't mind me saying that, but you were laughing at me. Um, so I believe that I, I know that I took out everything that needed to come out. I trimmed it by about 20% by the time we were all done. Luckily though, or not luckily, it was actually hard work. Uh, I lost none of the emotional undertone or subtext that I needed. It's all still there. It's just shown in dialogue and action. Um, and a tiny touch of emotion because I'm still Rachel. I can't leave that out. Uh, but she was really pleased with it and I am officially on submission. So fingers crossed for me, I'll either be super happy or super disappointed. And you know what? Either is fine. Definitely, I hope for super excited. Uh, but life rolls on and life is pretty good. And uh, I, I love this feeling of just kind of hands off. There's nothing I can do right now. So I'm getting smaller things done, just kind of poking at things on the edges, um, pulling together a few new projects, kind of uh, pulling strings and seeing what happens, what unravels and what really is knitted tightly. I am going too far with this um, clunky metaphor, so I will drop it. That's, um, that's my big news. Oh, and uh, tonight, it is uh, June 1st as I record, um, I'm going to Hamilton. So... See ya on the flip side. Post Hamilton. I love the music. I was completely addicted to it for about six months. I listened to nothing else. And um, that's tonight. Tomorrow is Wonder Woman. The weekend is going to have some kayaking. It's just going to be good times. So looking forward to that. I hope that you are getting some great writing done and or you know what some crappy writing done. I hope you're getting some crappy writing done because that's what we do. We write terrible first drafts and we worry about them later we fix them later that's what we do and uh and if you can get some rest do that we talk a little bit about rest in the interview and that's that's all i enjoy this interview i know that you will and i'll talk to you soon all right well i could not be more pleased to welcome monica leonel to the show today hello monica Hello, thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. Let me give a little introduction for those who may not know you yet. Uh, Monica Leonel has written over half a million words of fiction spread across several genres and series, most notably her young adult urban fantasy and paranormal romance series, Waters Dark and Deep. Monica also writes about indie publishing uh, at proseonfire.com. Her most recent nonfiction series, Growth Hacking for Storytellers, has helped thousands of writers, including myself, write faster, become better storytellers, and find their way to success. She's also the creator of the Breakout Author Masterclass. She lives in a very, very old three-story home in St. Louis, Missouri with her husband and adorable Westie, Mia. It possibly has ghosts, the house, probably not, not Mia. And it definitely has a <laughs> secret passage. Do you know where the secret passage is? <laughs> Yes, it's very weird. It's um, it's actually on the third floor, which we think the third floor was originally um, like a like servants' quarters because uh -huh. we were able. It's it's kind of like the the house was built in um, like eighteen 
like the 1890s. Wow. And so it was, uh, we think it was like a fairly rich person who built it. Obviously, like today, it's not, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just like an old home. But <laughs> at the time, it was, you know, fancy. And we found, we actually went through some old newspaper clippings and found little, um, with our address and found like little, uh, ads for like, Oh, I need a good, I need a good German girl to um, to wash clothing, (laughs) you know, like whatever, um, housekeeper type of thing. And it was, it's really funny. Um, so yeah, so there's, there's just like the secret passage that goes, um, into, it goes through one of the rooms through the floor and goes out into what is now like a bathroom. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Do you ever ever (laughs) use it? Um, I think it would only fit a small child. I don't like, I, I, I have not tried to go down it, but it's not really that large. And, um, ever need to hide anybody. Yeah. That's where you'll put them. Right. <laughs> if you need to hide someone very small, <laughs> someone very small. <laughs> or somebody who would like to like be incredibly cramped. Right. Somebody who like, really needs space. to be hidden. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Well, this show is yeah. all about process and I'm really interested in talking to you about your process because I know that you have um, some awesome processes in place and that's why I'm just super happy to have you on the show. Um, so let's jump into that. What is the best time of day for you to write and where do you get your writing done? Hmm. Um, so I actually have to write all over my house or go to a coffee shop. I have to change it up. I get really bored with the same place, but I would say that, um, most of the time I am not writing daily. I'm actually more of a burst of energy type of writer. Mm -hmm. And so I'll spend like an entire week just like plowing through words, like writing to save my life type of thing. Um, and then I'll take off like a couple weeks. So, um, for me, I would say really any time of day, I do love writing in the late night Mm. hours because it's just so quiet and dark and you can kind of, um, focus on what you're writing. And it is a mysterious, eerie time to write and you write the paranormal or in fantasy. Awesome. And this is the question. Let's zero in here and spend some time here. How do you write? I usually say longhand um, or computer, but I know that you do a little bit something different. Yeah. So the way I write, I write a couple different ways. One is that I'll create a very detailed outline and create beats, and then I will dictate um, for sometimes hours on end. And so I will use the Pomodoro method, which is 25 minutes of like super focused writing, and then five minute break, and then 25 minutes, and then five minute break. So you do that cycle four times and that's considered, um, a whole session and then you get a 30 minute break, three minutes to an hour. Um, so I usually take like an hour. Yeah. Um, (laughs) obviously. Yeah. Who wouldn't? Um, I can't take a five minute break. It's always a 10 minute break. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So I use, I use dictation a lot. I also, um, I do sometimes type though. So if I'm just feeling, uh, if I'm just feeling more like I want to enjoy the process, then I will just bring my laptop and type. And then I do also sometimes write on the go, um, depending. So I, I take a lot of walks throughout the uh, week and I have a Fitbit <laughs> right here. <laughs> um, and I like to get as many steps as possible. So I will sometimes take um, I'll use a program called uh, Dragon Anywhere, and it's just an app on your phone. You can get it. I think it's fifteen dollars a month, um, and I will take that on walks in the park. And I'll often be walking for like two hours, and I'll sometimes do dictation there too. So. Now, so I know that at one point you were dictating into like a um, a recording device. Are you using your phone mm-hmm. now and Dragon Anywhere instead? Yeah, I used to have this ridiculously complicated setup. So it was actually this microphone with like, you know, uh, like the co- the um, XLR cord, like hooked up to this adapter that was hooked up to my iPad that had like this recording software on it. And it was and then I would run it through um, Dragon's transcription service. Yeah. Um, so so you can do that if you have I think it's um it's dragon for Mac, or if you have the professional version for windows, you can, they have like a little transcription thing. So that's how I used to do it. And, uh, thankfully 
drag nuance has caught on to that. So the company that does the software has caught on and they just created this app and the app works quite well. It's not the highest level of, um, of ability in terms of accuracy, but it works quite well for my purposes. And I've also, I'm also not that serious about the accuracy as well. Like if I get 95%, like I'm pretty happy. Um, so I, yeah, I use that and you can send it to Evernote and you can send it to email and that sort of thing. So I'll kind of piece together my uh, draft that way. That is so awesome. And listeners, uh, Monica has a book called Dictate Your Book, which I like read in one sitting and I'm, I'm super, super into dictation, especially I'm really into the idea of dictation. <laughs> <laughs> I did use Dragon for Mac to write one of my books. Um, and I probably, it was like a, I think it was an 80,000 word book and I probably dictated about 75% of it. Um, and I was just so frustrated with the Dragon for Mac because it's super buggy, super, super, super buggy. And they're just not fixing it. And, um, and that's fine. And I was talking to Jay Thorne recently. I bought this super cheap HP computer for like 200 bucks. I haven't even set it up yet, but I bought it online and I'm going to purchase the Dragon PC version and just use it for that on that computer, which I'm super excited about because I did enjoy it. And I think my brain was finally making the leap to actually being able to create, which by voice and that took me a long time to get comfortable with how how long did it take you um yeah a lot of people ask me this I would say it probably took me about a month at least mm -hmm. um and I you know I think what dragon or I think what dictation forces you to do it forces you to do a lot more prep yeah. Um, and it forces you to just learn to speak out loud. I mean, obviously as a podcaster, you have a lot of experience with that already. A lot of authors are like introverts and like, ah, <laughs> yeah. and so it, it, it feels even more uncomfortable for them. But yeah, I would just say, give it a month, um, maybe two months, just depending on your level. And then the other thing that I, um, that really helped me was I would start dictating stuff like emails stuff that was, um, lower risk or like yeah. lower men, you know, mental, um, taxation. Um, and I would also start dictating like text to my friends or whatever. Cause we all have, you know, the voice activation stuff on our smartphones. And I think we're all so getting, that helped me a lot. We're all getting better at doing that too. Just naturally. It just seems like a thing that everybody's doing, not just writers. We're all dictating a little bit more. Um, something in your book that really, really shifted something in my brain that, that helped a lot that I want to point out is that, um, you know, I would look at the screen and I would be dictating and something would happen and one of the words would be wrong or six of the words would be wrong and I'd get so frustrated. And and then I'd stop and I'd go back and especially in the Mac Dragon, that's where it gets buggy if you start messing with what's on the screen while you're dictating. And you said, just say it again. Just say <laughs> yeah. it again more clearly and then later you can yeah. erase that bad sentence. And I was like, Duh, that is genius because it's so much faster for me just to say it clearly instead of mumbling as I often do. And so that was just a yeah. huge light bulb that really, really helped with that book. So thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> no so problem. Cool. Um, how do you refill the creative well for yourself? Well, for me, so a lot of it is writing or sorry, walking. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just spend a lot of time walking and that sounds strange, but to be honest, before that it was alcohol. <laughs> so yeah, the walking sure. is so much better than the alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's, that's like a great a answer. Comment, but... I love that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think even more recently, it's just spending time with family and friends yeah. I've noticed is helping me a lot. And I'll, I also love to cook. Um, I'm not necessarily great at cooking, but I love doing it. So I am the same way. I like to just mess around in the kitchen, even if it doesn't always turn out that great. Um, yeah. What is the absolute best or worst writing advice you've ever been given? I'm changing this question up with you a little bit. I'm going best or worst nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the worst, I would say, is just get your butt in the chair and write. And we all hear that so much where it's just like, if you would just sit down and do this. And I think for most people, what would actually help them write is to, um, is to a study habits, because mm -hmm. I think when you study different, just the psychology of how you develop a habit, then you can get past a lot of the things um, what a great that answer. hold us back from it. 
Yeah. And then um, the other thing is um, that you probably like, so the other thing I see with writers is that they have a lot of fear and a lot of blocks around it. And I know I experienced that. Like I would, before I would write anything, especially fiction, I was so like stuck in my head over it. I would sometimes sit down for like up to an hour trying to force myself to write and like could not bring myself to do it. And then an hour later I would start writing and I was like, why did it take me like an entire, you know, why did I waste this whole hour just like sitting here? Um, and so I think a lot of that has to do with blocks. And so if you just invest a little bit of time on clearing your fears and your self-sabotage and stuff around writing, then you'll be in a much better place to get your writing done. How did you do that though? That's such a large thing. Do you have any, do you have any suggestions? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, so I think some of the things that hold people back, um, definitely some version of I'm not good enough, um, that holds back so, so many people. And what I had to do to flip that was I had to realize that the, I'm not good enough in all different forms, right? Like my writing's not good enough. My book's not good enough. I don't know enough. I'm not, I don't have the credentials, blah, blah, blah. Um, All of that, though, I had to realize was all about my own ego Mm -hmm. and not at all about the service I could give to others and the value I could give to others. And so when I was able to be like, let's put other people first, let's not make this all about me, um, that like that commitment to that idea was what really helped me. So that's just one. Um, I would like to put you on my speed dial. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> I'm ha- do you have another one you want to share or um yeah I'm happy well another one is that a lot of people have a lot of things in their life that um hold them back from writing so like maybe um a spouse or children who are not fully on board with like the writing dream um and with that it's like you have to get those people on board or like coworkers or a boss or friends or anybody if you don't have the people in your life going in the same direction as your goals, then you are going to constantly be having that like butting heads thing. Um, and that is definitely going to hold you back because you are not going to want to cause tension in those relationships. So um, you, there, are, there are lots of ways to get people on board. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if we should go into those. There, there's, always play, there's always ways to get people on board or at least attempt to. But I think another strong thing to do is just to kind of forget about them. And find mm-hmm. the people who will champion you, people who are at the same yes. level that you are in writing, and then you just all move forward together as a group, which is, I'm sure, what you found in your life. You have yep. the circle of writers around you to support you. So, yep, exactly. So yeah, cool. Definitely. <laughs> what, what secret writing tip of awesomeness did you discover the hard way? Um, I mean, I think the the biggest one was really being able to write faster became my superpower and it kind of became my savior in this industry because I do think that if you're going to produce for money and if you want to get to that place faster, you do need to be able to write faster. Um, so just increasing my speed in that area and, I, you know, I ended up going from, um, 900 words per hour to over 3,500 words per hour. And that increase, it was challenging to do. It took me a couple months, but it has changed my life completely. And so if people are interested in kind of reading how I did that, it's at prosonfire.com slash 3,500, um, just the numbers. So you can go check it out and hear more about that. How does that feel um, in terms of your brain when you're doing it? Because I definitely can speak that fast, but I'm not sure if I'm that smart to to go <laughs> to go that fast. You know, like I, I I find sometimes like even when I'm dictating, I top out around 2,500 words because I I don't know the ideas dry up for a minute and I need that 10 minute break to go collect them again. How does that feel in your brain? Yeah, I think for me, uh, I try to do a lot of prep. So yeah. a lot of times that helps. Um, but I, I still think 2,500 words is great. Yeah. I also know people and have friends like Chris Fox, yes. for example, who can Damn do over 5,000. And it's just like, you know, good, good for you. Like, <laughs> That's a goal. Have you, um, ever, have you ever hit that before? 5,000? I don't think I have. I, I mean, my highest has been like, 4,100. Um, and that's, that's on a awesome. very good day, but 
you know, 2,500 is still really good. Yeah. Like most people can't do it. So I think you I have to it. kind of be where you're at and be happy with what and, you, what you're at. And you're saving your wrists. So that's awesome. Yes, exactly. Uh, can you give us a quick craft tip of any sort? Um, craft. I mean, definitely follow the four part story structure. That's going to help you create a good story. But then the other thing I would say is really pay attention to your themes of your yeah. book. A lot of people don't talk about theme, but, um, when you focus on your theme, I think a lot of the other stuff falls into alignment, like your characters, your plot, um, all sorts of other stuff. And I, I talk about this more. It's hard for me to explain that in detail um, just on a podcast, but I talk about it more in my book, Nail Your Story. And it's it's basically just like if you know what your theme is and if you know you're trying to write a story about good and evil, for example, um, or if you know you want to write a story about like Lyme disease or um, health issues or suffering, like that, it just it's like a lens through which you can – filter out all the extraneous. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you know, the end of a story, you want people to feel something specific. And so a theme can really help you hone in on that end delivery and that experience that you want to deliver to people. I love that. So that's another one. Yeah. Now, when you say four part, uh, four, four act story structure, you're referring to the Larry Brooks method. Um, yeah. I love yeah, him. Exactly. Yeah. So if anybody's mm-hmm. curious about that, Larry Brooks has a great book called Story Engineering. Some people are hot and cold on it. I'm super hot on it. Mm-hmm. Like that just changed everything Me about too. the way I look at story. So yeah, that's Me fantastic. Too. Um, yep. On really bad days, what other profession would you wish you had? <laughs> Probably professional Netflix watcher, like <laughs> Netflix binger. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I like most of the days when I don't want to write or I don't want to do anything, you know, related to this business, like market my books or whatever. It's almost always like I just want to sit there and do nothing. So. <laughs> Um, which is something that I think, especially authors, we don't do very often. I like know. I can't say I binge Netflix very often. I, but it's I awesome. could not agree <laughs> with you more. Like I've just been thinking so much about rest lately and how we have to have it in our creative lives and how, especially as authors, we don't let ourselves have it. So I have been doing a lot more nothing lately and it is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, if, definitely. If you were starting over as a new writer right now, what advice would you give baby Monica writer? <laughs> I, you know, I would probably say join more communities mm-hmm. sooner, um, go to more events sooner, get more author mentors sooner, because mm-hmm. I think those three things will, um, they'll just greatly accelerate your progress. And then Honestly, I like I am very happy that I know how to write faster and that I took the time and took like literally several months to work on just that skill. I think that it has just accelerated my progress so much. Um, And, you know, there are so many other things. But for me, writing faster was just a game changer for me. I truly believe that the more we write, the better we get, period. It's you don't even have to try. It just is a result. Um, it's also good to try to get better, but, but it also happens as a result of writing faster and the faster you write, the faster you are getting better. Literally. I love that. And what would you like to tell us about right now? What would you like to, what's, what's out Um, there in the world right now? Yeah. So I have a new audio course called, um, it's called Breakout Author Secrets. It's at prosonfire.com slash breakout. Um, so, and it's free, Uh, And it's basically five lessons and it's a lot about book marketing and just a new way of thinking about it from more of a strategic level than a tactics level. And so I think a lot of us who are authors, we're constantly like going after like this shiny new thing. um, And that can be really challenging. It can make us feel really overwhelmed. It can just um, destroy our energy And so getting super aligned on the marketing side um, for book marketing, I think is incredibly important. So that's what the course is about. It's free. Um, There's also a Facebook group for it called Breakout Author Secrets. So you can look that up as well. Um, But yeah, it's it's um, it's a it's a really great course. And a lot of people have taken it and they are um, enjoying it. I'm going to go sign up immediately. Yeah, cool. (laughs) Personally. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> and listeners, I can recommend any of her craft books. Um, they're just, they're great and they're readable and they're actionable. And I just really enjoy your voice. So, and I've really enjoyed this podcast. Thank you so much. This is just yeah, like, thanks for having me. This is so fun. I've got a little <laughs> pep in my step now. And I hope you have a wonderful, productive day, if that's what you're after, or a very restful one, if that's also what you're after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thank you so much, I do Monica. Have... What do you have? Yeah. Th- I was going to say, I do have a couple deadlines. Oh, so <laughs> sorry. I have to do this, but <laughs> no, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, right. but after that, it will be rest. But thank you so much for having me on the podcast. I had a great time. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right, bye.